Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to BSL 17 Hasu League quarterfinal. I've been looking forward to this one in particular. Upper left hand corner, we got Urban starting as the Red Zerg. Bottom right hand corner, we got I Love XTO starting as the Marine, the Green, Green Terran. We'll go with Green. It's lovely colors, though, and this is going to be on Retro, which should be an intense match. Urban's been playing out of his mind lately. And I've actually been watching his stream, and I think he's gotten even better between whenever this finished and when he's playing. He's really grinding right now, <coughs> looking in top shape. And so I'm not sure where he is in comparison to when this was played, but I am going to say, looking at him lately, just checking out his stream, which you should, by the way, on Twitch. Fun guy, has a really entertaining stream up there. Good dude. He's vouched. He's diggity vouched. I'll put that out there. It's funny, I'll say a lot of people that are nice people or whatever, but I only vouch a couple people. I will vouch Erdman, I will vouch Machine. I will vouch Raz. I don't want to get I don't want to give too many vouches out. I'll vouch G5. Those are the five guys the four guys right this second. Go check out their streams, they're fun guys. And uh nice people and formidable players. I cannot vouch Artosis though, because the quality of his chat is just a little bit too intense, I think, for the average person to enjoy the Starcraft that's getting played. All of that aside, I will vouch him as a caster, and I'll vouch him as one of those guys who's just pushed and pushed and pushed and made things happen. <clears throat> Spawning pool dropping. Overpool start here from Urban. We're seeing a barracks opener from I Love XTO. I Love XTO has, <coughs> on the other side, I need to stop pumping up my man Herb. I will say I'm just biased towards him right this second. I Love XTO, I will be excited if he advances as well because he's been playing fantastically. He's gone deep multiple times in Hasu League. And again, he's one of these guys, like both these guys, all the, all the, everybody in the round of eight, I look at and I'm like, they're amazing players. They're just really, really good. And guys that I would expect to see in Gosu League. If not next season, then sometime soon. If not the Pro League, Overlord being found in the bottom left corner. So XTO not bothering to go up to the main instead bypassing directions and moving up to the upper left-hand corner. We do have a quick gas there from Urban. I don't know what the ping is like between these two guys. It is relatively in its close time zones, but I don't think it's close. Uh, <laughs> it's still a lot of distance to travel just by ground. Do you have a standard hatchery behind this from Urban? No movement to send an initial drone yet to go for third base. And it looks like he's going to initially ignore the first SCV. And he also, keep in mind, he knows the positioning of XTO based on where that SCV moved from, based on standing scout, or he can take the risk. And it looks like it is going to be a command center. And is XTO going to try to build a bunker on the low ground? Currently, he's got two Marines. I believe he tried to drop that. He, he did queue up the four Marines in front of this. <clears throat> and Urban, I think, wanting to apply the pressure to try to force a bunker initially or if nothing else, get a run by. And right now, XTO refusing to do it. The four Zerglings are making the way up. They don't have speed game in mind. Four Zerglings versus three Marines is not a winning scenario, and it looks like XTO just going to hold on the low ground to make sure that a run by is not happening. In the meantime, the two Zerglings, well, single Zergling that was running behind this, able to get a good amount of damage done on that SCV. The SCV has gotten the information it's looking for as far as the timing of the layer. <coughs> Final shot right there to take it out. Second barracks dropping refinery as well. So XTO, especially with the Zergling position, I do like what I want to comment on something Urban's doing that a lot of other Zergs have lacked up to this stage, which is he doesn't have Overlords in position yet, but he's moved his Zerglings up to keep an eye on the SCV count, which is extremely important. Engineering Bay that also is applying some interesting latent pressure on I Love XTO where he's building his buildings in a little bit more of a defensive position. So Urban sneaking forward, trying to test the lines, <coughs> making XTO a little bit nervous. Maybe he could pick off an SCV if it was along that southern path, but XTO thus far has well defended. And you can see now that that Overlord's getting in position, the Zerglings feel a little bit more comfortable drawing back. That Engineering Bay 7 8 finish. We have the double barracks up and we do have that. So it is going to be two Rex Academy, standard play. Zerglings sneaking forward, able to pick an SCV up and actually delay that engineering bay just a touch. That'll make XTO nervous, but not a lot else. Might delay a turret by a few seconds. I don't think that's going to open up anything for, for Urban, but getting that one SCV is a nice feather in the cap. The initial two medics are being, are being produced. No third hatchery as of yet from Urban. 
and I'm not seeing movements towards an interior third base. Plus, he's got that second gas up, which leads me to believe he might go just heads up Mutalisk here. However, what he had, or never mind, there's the drone making his way out to grab the third. What he has done detrimentally is he had a little bit of a moment there with the supply gap, which is going to slow down the Mutalisks potentially just a tad. They should be out around the six minute mark. This is actually coming out very, very rapid from Ermon. CompSat sees it, but this is coming out around the 530. And usually you see the Mutalisks at this stage at six, so that shows some solid mineral boosting and wow, that was actually really, really quick. So very, very sharp from Ermon as well. They're gonna get towards the base still around the six minute mark, but that's forcing x -Teal. It's Is he gonna build extra turrets as a result? Looks like he's just getting the standard three and getting that third barracks up online, but nice timing ahead of everything. We've got range and plus one weapons queued up. Mutalisks are in flight. Third hatchery now building at the upper right. Kind of interesting position with this overlord across that side position. The zerglings have pulled off. I don't think they've expended themselves. I think they did back off. Have pulled off the <coughs> pulled off the front. Excuse me. Still got a little bit of a cough. Urban testing to see what the turret situation is. He discovers the two along the natural expansion. There's a lot of marines in between here as well. And XTO really, yeah, he's dropping some extra turrets upon the timing of this. And also maybe because he saw that second gas up and recognizing that it was going to be a heavier mutalisk dedication as a result. So now it's up to Urban. So the extra turrets for extra padding. Urban investing heavily into mutalisks here. That's going to delay that third hatch. Or I should say we already have a bit of a delay on that third hatch gas, but all of the mutalisk investment, what that will do is that'll make him feel a little bit more comfortable as far as the aggressive position, oh, not quite able to get a Marine there. But at the same time, that's going to delay three base hatch replay or three base uh, hive play. So it's going to take a little bit longer to get the hive up in position. In the meantime, it looks like a Mutalisk has gotten picked off, but a few Marines have died in the meantime as well. Urban's still sitting around that 21 worker count. There's a few drones out there that have not yet been applied to the front. Plus one weapons. About seven eights finished. Second gas being dropped from I Love XTO. He's on really good timing here for that starport. <coughs> Pretty solid. Still sitting on three barracks. Has tacked on a couple additional medics, but is playing very, very passively, which is wise. Urban tacking on the Hydralist end behind this. And keep in mind, if he invests in lurkers, that's more gas on top of all of these mutalisks. That will be a delay. A me several medics getting picked off there. So that's two medics. There's still three more, but do these two, and they do have plenty of energy, but that will give XTO a bit of pause for thought. And thus far, it looks like it's just a one Mutalist that's been picked off. Third gas now coming online from Urban. This feels a little bit late as far as that third gas take. We do have double starport being built with a control tower as well, science facility along the way. Now keep in mind, it was a pretty hefty investment early with these Mutalisks, and I don't know that Urban has really gotten the pay out of it. However, XTO invested so heavily in turrets in the interim. I think it slowed him down a bit. And man, the medics have just been getting fried here. So four medics out, but a lot of them getting picked off. Fifth barracks now coming online. We have the double starport ready to pump the double science vessel. Lurker tech researching that engineering bay a little bit exposed and taking some damage on the front. Urban trying to find what he can. That third gas is up and running, but he's taking a minute to get to the heftier. Lost a mutalist right. This lost several mutalists right there. Taking him a minute to get to the heftier drone count he's looking for. Also, he's pumping five mutalists right this second. And waiting for science vessels to get queued up. But XTO missing it in the midst of this. If he had that irradiator science vessel here a little bit earlier, that might have been not a waste, but certainly a detriment to Urban's attack plan. But in the meantime, because that irradiate and the science vessel is coming out a little bit slower, despite having the double starport up, that's actually really big. Wait, now the second one queued up. A little bit slow overall. I'm not sure what happened with the gas exchange. Maybe a couple additional, because of those medics getting picked off, XTO feeling like he needed to fill it up and that delaying this, uh, the science vessels out a little bit. So they're coming out uh, somewhat later than they would have otherwise, which is allowing, and it radiate just now starting to research, which is allowing those mutalists to be a larger threat than they would be otherwise. Plus one weapons right there. Comsat finding that, seeing that hive, an additional hatchery being dropped by Urban. Urban still hasn't stepped on the gas as far as the drone count goes, but he's really pinned XTO in. And has done, so 
and really thinning out that medic reinforce. I wanted to look as what's behind this. XDO, some beautiful micro from Urban as that Marine army with the medics getting spread out on kind of a vertical, and he was attacking directly alongside it. He has a single Hydralis there, it looks like, to maybe plug the gap should the Marines make their way top right. But I Love XDO has been basically pinned in his base. And again, I'm wondering if this is an artifact from the later Radiate. And Urban, because of that late Radiate, able to get some bonus damage on those forward Marines. Still some more Mutalists back at the front, morphing some Lurkers. He's got the Defiler Mound on the way, the fourth hatchery comfortably. Now some Medic Marines are pulling out. Urban is not needed to drop a Sunken Colony, keep in mind, in the midst of this. Now with the Radiate Research, A good irradiate on the Mutalisk. You can see how much group damage they're taking. A rough split there. So a lot of them severely weakened. And there's a dash to the upper right-hand corner. There's only a single Lurker there right this second. This could be trouble for Urban. But for whatever reason, XTO... So two Science Vessels making their way forward, but the rest of the troops drawing back. A single Lurker there. I'm not sure if Urban... I'm not sure if XTO got a view, but Urban dashing the Mutalisks over to try to defend. There should be a second to radiate, but the irradiate being utilized on the Lurker on the high ground to maybe pincer things up. Pincer things to... Wrong wrong word there. To be able to just obliterate what's there in the front. Some Lurkers on the flank. Urban dashing in with the Lurkers headlong. The Mutalisks going overhead. And a good attack. Grouping of spines obliterating a lot of that army. XTO having trouble controlling the Medic Marine Force. So he's going to end up losing everything top right. Great defense from Urban. Only lost... Two Lurkers, technically three with that Irradiate, <laughs> but a and also able to pick off the Science Vessels on Retreat. So Urban being an absolute predator here. Emergency something going to top right instead of a Nidus right this second. He doesn't need to get that Nidus up sooner rather than later. Looks like that's going at his natural double evolution chamber at the main to start pumping upgrades. But now Urban on the corner of 40 drones. Yeah, just pumping up into the 40 drone mark. Grabbing that natural expansion, feeling comfortable doing so. Another grouping of medic marines starting to move out for I Love XDO. There should be some additional lurkers, but that science vessel count getting hurt early, and that is very detrimental. In the meantime, Urban not spotting this army potentially, so that's three lurkers out of position to try to defend top right. I don't think that Nidus Canal is going to be there in time. Lurkers trying to peel forward. The Mutalisks are out of position to provide some additional fence. That's going to have to be a canceled natural expansion in the hatchery. So Urban maybe being a little bit overzealous. Leaving the Mutalisks unspread as he's going to engage. It looks like he didn't cancel that hatchery, so that is a downed 300 minerals. Another Sunk Colony. The Nidus is up, but we don't have Defilers here yet. A good Mutalisk spread to making sure they aren't bashed. And it looks like the back Mutalisk was irradiated there. And the Sunken Colony being approached a bit at a time, uh, kind of individually at a time. So the Mutalists, they're going to die trying to engage the Medic Marines. But both Science Vessels are taken out. And honestly, that's a win for Urban. Another grouping of Medic Marines moving out on the field. This is turning into a crazy one. Urban's still down a good amount of supply. I, I got to say, there's if I was going to say there's a weakness in Urban's play, it's this. He has trouble transitioning and really accelerating the gas at these later stages and making it to, to, from mid game to late game. But once he hits late game, he tends to be in good straights. Could be the taxation of all that micro that you, and everything you got to pay attention to out on the screen. In the meantime, XTO adding an additional command center at the six o'clock location, staging some medic Marines to the high ground or defilers preventatively dropping a swarm. Credit to Urban though. He's kept that science pistol count very, very low. Adrenal upgrade on the way. A couple lurkers in the backfield just in case there was a drop incoming. Looks like no drop on the way. Urban kind of hurting for one advantage of the mutalists out in the field as well. As you can get, you get a good deal. Blah, 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 I can't talk all of a sudden. You get a good deal of map vision, kind of latently with him. And right now, you can see the spread he's got, but he doesn't have that active marauding attack force. Doing a good job of backing this medic marine force into the corner, alongside the lurker line. A couple latent drones back here, and a couple lurkers not involved in the battle, but XTO wanting to create some sort of breach here, top right-hand corner, and keep Urban's gas tax. Moving in, not the best micro position. That was a good... The Lurker spread is making it challenging. Really good positioning here from Urban, and Urban also trying to test the corners to find a science vessel, and he gets yet another one. That is five dead science vessels. The initial five science vessels all dying 
with maybe an irradiate or two that have been expended, which is extreme value for Urban. It looks like a drone wanting to get in there. We had a pause in between the match, which gives us that flurry of text. Didn't happen that quickly. <laughs> and another base being grabbed by Urban at the nine o'clock location. He's trying to, in the bottom left-hand corner as well, trying to sneak additional expansions. XTO is doing a great job with the macro. That's something he tends to be on top of. So he's got more science vessels out there, but he really hasn't, even though the science vessels have been out in the field, they haven't dropped irradiates out on a lot of these high value units. And that's allowing Urban to have a stronger position than he might otherwise. So right now he's a little bit overproduced with the defilers. There he's got three defilers. That might've been a, a miss hit, a, a miss rally. Trying to take position here bottom left. Needs to cancel the hatchery at the nine o'clock now that it's spotted. So that's gonna be a dead hatchery. He is able to get the cancellation that time and pull out, but he is starting to establish position here in the bottom right hand corner to get that fourth gas. And that fourth gas tends to be that big marker, which allows the ultralisks to come on the field and also allows Zerg to feel a lot more comfortable as far as their raw gas supply. In the meantime, Main is starting to look thin for XTO. He might want to think about taking another base. The nine o'clock position might not, or the three o'clock position, I should say, might not be a bad choice. It looks like the drone was spotted bottom left as well. So another canceled hatchery from Urban. And even though this is creating delays, it looks like he is going to be able to get that fourth gas up. He's preemptively building that gas. He might want to drop that gas preemptively at the 12 o'clock location as well. That's distracting, that has been distracting XTO from a lot of things. But on top of it, that's potentially been halting him grabbing an additional base. But he needs to a little bit sooner rather than later. Two base you can roll for quite some time. Okay, now he's grabbing that base bottom left. Let's see if he turns around, starts trying to apply that pressure. Third gas or fourth gas is up. A potential fifth gas on the way. You got about 500 gas left in that main, but it still mines well depleted. We have Defiler Plague being upgraded as well. Additional upgrades look like it is going to transition to Mutaling. No Overlord speed as of yet, so Overlord's getting the bulk of the Iradia. That's still, and it looks like we had a couple Hydralisks midfield. I'm not sure if that was a bad rally or they were just out there to, to provide a little bit of scouting information. Another scan forward. They're not dropships to push through, but that is a lot of science vessels. XTO now moving over with a big bulkhead, however, losing one of them instantaneously. This is a huge grouping of science vessels that's going to be able to radiate the bejesus out of the defilers, but still not protecting them very well. It looks like instead he split off that medic marine army, able to force a cancellation of that hatchery at the 12 o'clock location. The drone was sneaking out to the nine o'clock. That's been picked off. So XGO doing a good job of boxing Urban in, but a, and he's got a massive supply lead, but the ultralisks are taking the field. A couple fire bats. It looks like we have plus three weapons, but plus zero armor in the midst of this. Because maybe a delayed Maybe because of a lack of a second engineering bay. Armory being grabbed behind all this. A big plague that I missed on the science vessels. It looks like that is going to stand. And the Zerglings able to just hang out, move forward. And those, these fire bats, etc., are just melting onto, well, with the plague, but also the fact, but the lack of the armor upgrade is, is making that adrenal upgrade on top of everything else all the more powerful. Two Ultralisks actually, I believe, will be sufficient. Where before I would think potentially not, I think this might be sufficient to go ahead and wipe out the rest of this army. And more science vessels getting picked off in the midst of this. Good splits. So now, again, XTO down to a single science vessel. And again, let's see if I'm right. Yeah, it, the two Ultralisks able to clear out top left. So that's a fourth gas capped for Urban. No 12 o'clock base grabbed as of yet. He's sitting at 111 supply, so down 50 supply. Battlecruiser now sneaking out for XTO. Wants to try to tax that gas supply but Urban starting to feel his legs a little bit is equal on workers bottom left hand base is not quite saturated for XDO he's left a few minerals at that main he's sitting on three bases to work with he's also just camping some troops there it looks like the nine o'clock content to deny that so more troops moving out gonna be able to obliterate that ultralisk without any defense open field and Urban now that he's got a little bit of troop I do like what XDO's done where one thing Zerg will do at this stage of the map is just try to run troops absolutely everywhere to create havoc in exterior bases. And XTO is leaving large pockets of troops at multiple locations where he can pressure Urban, force some gas at him, another radiate drop there. And it looks like a plague on that battle cruiser, but it is starting to work on that extractor. It's actually imperative that Urban 
takes care of that. We have double Spore Colony, it looks like, in the corner. That plus the Plague might be sufficient. Some more Zerglings sneaking along that left-hand corridor. Xtio holding short. Looks like that Science Missile and that Battle Cruiser taken out. Some Zerglings able to sprint through the gap. We have a Firebat, a Medic, and some Marines in between. I don't know that that Firebat is going to provide... We'll see how this goes with that Firebat with level 3 weapons and these Zerglings. A Plague on top of it to soften everything up. That plus a Dark Swarm is certainly going to be a breach. Even with the Firebats. And now, the bottom left-hand base is being exposed, but we have a counterattack pressure from XTO at the natural expansion. We have a handful of defilers here, some Zerglings just spawning. This could be a big hit. It doesn't look like it's going to be a dropship rally. Firebats continually produced are halting those Zerglings, but the Zerglings still able to get some... Looks like with the Medic being produced there, that might be it for the base. XTO trying to reinforce bottom left. That's delaying the attack at the, the main, and Urbmon now has fielded a lot of Ultralisks from the top left. He's going to have to reposition them to defend his natural expansion, though. Right now, he's utilizing them to clean up this attack force that's mid-map. And that might be a mistake here, as Urbmon getting pressured at his natural expansion. Exio moving in. The Lurkers, however, were not targeted. <coughs> so they were able to get a lot of damage done. Some Ultralis is coming out in the nick of time to clean out what's left. And the Ultralis, rather than defending that natural expansion, are diving in, in, into the 6 o'clock, forcing a lift up here. A few Zerglings were in the bottom left creating some havoc, and all of a sudden, XTO has a burning command center. Some Ultralisks on his side of the map. His natural expansion's gone. He's down to one mining base that's under a pretty decent threat. A plague drop to make these Ultralisks get some bonus damage done. Ultralisks starting to push in here at the 9 o'clock location, and the 12 o'clock base getting grabbed from Urbmon. So Urbmon now has a supply lead, starting to shift this around. Finally, plus one armor is going to finish for I Love XTO, a battlecruiser moving in to try to clean up the SCVs, also battling as well. <clears throat> Let's see if these Ultralis just move. They could honestly just move here bottom left with that Defiler and get a lot of damage done. Repair on that command center so it's not going to burn in the air. But a stream of Zerglings moving out and all of a sudden the XTO falling apart as he's the resources are halted for him. He didn't have the best saturation bottom left, but he's down to one base saturation. Can't manage everything he's running. The SCVs are making their way across just to find that attack force. A plague dropped on the high ground. The Ultralisks waiting. Let's see if there's another. Looks like a... Are there any... Fi the Firebats cannot get to the front. So the, the problem is, is there's SCVs on the front. So they're doing a good job blockading. That might be enough time for XDO to get things rolling again. But right now, Urban suddenly has a massive bank that he should spend... And it looks like he is going to be able to breach bottom left, which is... So Exio started has started to remine 6 o'clock. He's reinforcing right this second. But this is starting to look scary for him all directions. 12 o'clock base is up. That gas is not yet capped. Urban does need to get on the spot with that because even though he's got a massive supply lead right this second, Terran can oftentimes swing things out of nowhere, especially with Doom Drops at the late stages of the match. Gas... Getting re-grabbed here at the 6 o'clock location. Engineering Bay providing some forward spotting. I guess that was lifted off this entire time to provide some generalized information. Some more Zerglings making their way across the field. I don't think they can breach 6 o'clock any longer alone with the positioning. Without Defiler assistance. We'll see. Yeah, it looks like that's just some sacrifice, sacrificial blood. Blood for the blood gods. Zerglings <coughs> looking to defend the... 3 o'clock position as well. Urban sitting back and starting to macro up a bit. Does need to get some additional gas if he wants to build more than just Zerglings right this second. But XTO utilizing this opportunity to try to push into the 12 o'clock. We have a bunch of creep colonies, but they're not yet morphed. Ultralisks maybe need to reposition to the 12 o'clock to defend it. It looks like they are going to move back. Burrow has been upgraded by the drones. No comps at as of yet. And the sunken colonies look like they're going to complete alongside several spores, so that's going to get cleaned up. Solid defense overall from Urban, and he's going to be able to keep these Ultralisks in the open field. However, XTO has closed the gap. 9 o'clock base now getting grabbed from Urban. The problem for XTO is he needs to stop Urban from taking these additional bases on top of defending what he's already got. Urban, though, to really make these bases hum for him, he needs to cap those gases. He doesn't really need to worry about the minerals. He's got plenty of minerals right this second. Just needs to get those gases in his clutches with the drones. 
stay on theme here. Clutches right now grouping up with some Ultralisks to go for a secondary attack to the 6 o'clock location. That has been commsatted. Initial Dark Swarm drop. We have a pocket of Marines that are not currently on the high ground. Unfortunately, as they make it, I think this is going to be too little too late. Everything protected here. No Science Vessels overhead. I feel like XDO has abandoned Science Vessel production right this second in to try to favor the battle cruisers, maybe because Urban's done such a fantastic job of wiping it out up to this stage. That's getting cleared out. Urban actually drawing back the rest of the Ultralisks to engage bottom left. Maybe going to throw a secondary attack of Zerglings. We'll have to see at the six o'clock. Single Ultralisk getting wiped out there. Still no gas capped at either of these locations. Still trying to push in here bottom left. And it looks like a very damaged Ultralisk is going to be able to get to the SEV lines at the very least and create some additional chaos. And there's, uh, that's a long distance to try to cover. Some battle cruisers have now found that nine o'clock base. It's going to take a while for them to wipe that out. But Urban breached bottom left entirely. Just needs to send out some additional attack forces. It looks like we already have drones making, or sorry, Scourge making the way out to deal with that battle cruiser. A secondary swarm of Zerglings should be able to clean up everything here bottom left, even with reinforcements. A Defiler getting caught on the low ground shouldn't make a difference, though, at this stage. Ultralisk working on the command center, and a, another grouping of Ultralisk cutting off the reinforcements. And XDO recognizing that Urban has the upper hand going to GG out of game one, but an intense one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening.